Okay, so as I was saying in part one is we have this beautiful idea of conservation of energy where energy can't be created or destroyed, but it can be transferred from one form to another. Now, so far, we have been assuming 100% efficiency. We've been essentially working in this hypothetical perfect world. In reality, our world isn't perfect. So oftentimes, energy can be what we call degraded to other types of energy that we don't want. So what do we mean by that? For example, in our roller coasters, we would really like that potential energy that we um, gathered by going to the top of the hill. We would like that to all go to kinetic energy so we can go real fast at the bottom of the hill. But in reality, not all of the potential energy is transferred to kinetic energy. Some of that energy goes to, let's say, heat energy with the coaster or the tracks heating up from friction. Or sound energy when your coaster makes noise or even light energy. Sometimes you see sparks of that roller coaster going across the tracks. And so this really isn't ideal for us. We would hope that we weren't losing too much energy to heat or sound or light on our roller coasters. We were hoping to get going really fast so that we can have fun on our roller coaster. So I wanna emphasize that when I say like the energy is lost to heat, sound, or light, I'm not saying lost in the sense that it disappeared from the universe because that would be a violation of conservation of energy. I mean lost in that it didn't go towards what we wanted it to go towards, and it's degraded. And so efficiency captures this idea, how much of that energy goes to the form that you actually want. So here's some examples. Something that is 100% efficient means that all of the energy you have goes towards exactly what you want it to go towards. It's essentially the perfect world. So 100% of the energy goes towards what you want and 0% is degraded. Let's say something is 70% efficient. That means 70% of the energy goes towards what you want, but 30% of it's degraded. And a low efficiency, like 20% efficient, means that only 20% of the energy goes towards what you want it to go to. 80% is degraded. To give you a sense of efficiencies that you might recognize for objects that like we have in our daily lives, a typical efficiency for like, you know, a 60 watt light bulb, it's about 2% efficient. Meaning that of the electrical energy that you're getting from your outlet, the wall, only 2% of that energy actually goes towards light. The rest of that energy is likely degraded in the form of heat. So you're losing 98% of that energy to heat energy. Oftentimes in big buildings or schools, we have fluorescent lights. And that's because fluorescent lights are more efficient, 10% efficient. Meaning that of the electrical energy that you're putting in, 10% goes towards the light energy that you were hoping for. That still leaves 90% that's lost to things like heat. Or in terms of cars, you often hear efficiency of cars. Kind of the average gas engine car is about 30% efficient. So of the energy that you're getting from that gas combustion, only 30% is actually going towards making your car go. 70% is degraded. Whereas electric engines or hybrids can be up to 90% efficient. I'd like you to notice that these efficiencies never go above 100%. 100% is the cap. Above 100% would mean that like energy is magically being created, and we know that can't be true. So in today's lecture, we covered conservation of energy as applied to the physics of roller coasters, as well as the idea of efficiency, energy that might not make it towards what you want, energy that could be degraded. For homework, you are going to practice these concepts using worksheet conservation of energy. It looks like this. This worksheet starts off with a few simple problems with the diagram and then goes into another roller coaster problem a little more complex than we covered in class with a chart for kinetic energy, potential energy, and total energy, as well as some questions for the different points in the roller coaster. As you go through this worksheet, of course, show all of your work, try your best, and please know that there is a questions document. And at the top of the questions document, you will find the answers to this worksheet. 
as well as adding your questions either on a particular number or a general question, and that will guide our discussion next class. The other piece of homework is your Roller Coaster Project's technical document. So at this point, you should first go back and revise part three, your energy analysis, number one, two, and three. That's what you have already tried to draft after last class, but likely you got stuck at some point. So now that you know a little bit more about conservation of energy, you should be able to revise and make those parts perfect. And then move on to part three, energy analysis, number four and number five. So do next class is going to be all of energy analysis part three in your roller coaster technical document. Again, taking a look at your homework, you have that worksheet conservation of energy, as well as the questions document that contains the answers. You have your draft roller coaster technical document, all of section three, meaning revise one, two, and three, and do, do number four and five. And you should know that your formative number six has been released back to you with comments and a grade and a rubric within that Google document. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email or sign up for office hours.